Hey everybody. Hey guys. Welcome back to the channel. Um, couple of vibes. Today, uh, like we promised, we were gonna come to Craft Azalea Park. So we just got here. It's in kind of the heart of Winter Park, in the, like kind of a neighborhood. It's kind of the rich neighborhood, but like, yeah. Um, fancy. Fancy neighborhood, yeah. So we're just gonna bring you along. It's not that big of a park. It's more of like a picnic -y park, and we'll just kind of show you what they have here. Yeah, there's a ton of trees. I can see that already. Yep. But it is hot today, so I don't know how long we're going to be here. <laughs> yeah. But we'll bring you along. So kind of when you first get in, um, they do have like paved walkways. They have grasses. They have picnic tables. But like, yeah. So like you come in, there's a paved walkway. You can kind of walk down this little path. Um, they also have like a water bottle fountain, so like you don't have to drink out of the uh, spout there. Um, so yeah, if you come here and you can bring your, uh, you know, your little tumblers or whatnot and just fill up your water here. I'm not sure if it's filtered water. I don't know how good it tastes, but yeah, you can get your water here. Um, and they have a little bowl down there for any any of your fur, furry pets, furry friends to come drink water. Okay, so this is um, Lake Maitland, um, part of the chain of lakes that we went on that boat ride a few videos ago. Um, and you can kind of see out there, you see the little island with the tree. It's kind of like their um, private little island that they throw their shoes and stuff on. Um, trying to get in, it's right there. If you, I'm not sure if you see it, but it's right there. But yeah, so this is the lake we took that boat ride on. And so this is the view from Craft Azalea. And what I like about here is like there's a ton of trees, so there's a ton of shady spots to walk in. And also like there's a lot of benches around to sit. And there's a lot of benches in good places. Like there's mm. bench, there's a bench right here. You can just like sit out, look at the lake. And there's a lot of benches just kind of lying around like that where you have a good view of the lake and it's shady and it's breezy. Yep. So. Yeah, definitely with all the trees and the shade, it does feel a lot cooler underneath in the park. So like, I think today it's pretty hot. It's in like, let's see, is what it says. It says 91, but I'm sure it feels more like 99, um, like not in the shade. But with the shade, it's, it's a lot cooler, it's manageable. But yeah, they have benches and um, places you can sit. I will say um, the pave part of it kind of tapers off um, once you get closer to the columns. We'll show you the columns later. Right now there's like a, a party there that's having um, some photos being done. It's a great place to take photos. Like I think we've mentioned this earlier. Yeah, yeah, you so. like engagement shoots. Like, I mean, even if you're doing like a baby shoot, like it's a good, nice picturesque place to get and it's photos on free it's a free location you just drive up and park so yeah you know yeah yeah once we get a chance we'll we'll show you the columns okay so um here's where the columns are you can kind of see You're welcome. um it's down the path, like the paved path. As soon as you get in, you can keep walking, you'll eventually get to it. Uh, you can have a place to sit. It's really nice to take pictures at. And then when you're sitting, you kind of get a good view of the lake as well. I thank you. <laughs> so, yeah. So yeah, this is where a lot of people come and take their pictures, like when they're doing their um, different like wedding shoots and engagement shoots and baby shoots. This is kind of like the icon of this park is the, the least columns. Um, let me see if I can get a full view of it. Yeah, there we go. It's a better shot of it. So yeah, you can see all the columns. Um, people will come here, just take pictures and it's pretty. And you got the trees in the back. And then if you turn around, you get the lake on this side. So yeah.
So the actual park isn't that big. I mean, we're almost pretty much done. There's that boat we took. Let's see if we can get it. A lot of people own there boats it is. in the area. That's the, oh, yeah. that's the tour we took. The <laughs> Chain of Lates tour. Highly recommend and we'll link our video down below. It was fun. Yeah. And yeah, it goes so fast that it's not, you don't feel the heat. Yep. So. But yeah, like I was saying, the park isn't that big. I mean, you could probably quarter mile lap around. Yeah, maybe not even a quarter mile. But like I said, it's picturesque. You get benches to sit on, to look out at the lake. You can bring your sandwiches, like a picnic thing. I imagine it's a good place to go bird watching too, because there's a couple different kinds of birds. Um, yeah, aquatic birds. Yeah. I don't know about wild, other wildlife per se, but. And if you keep walking down, you eventually get to a boat house where you can um, actually bring like your own kayaks or whatnot to get on the lake. Um, it's a little further down. Uh, we'll pick it back up when we get there. I think there's like a boardwalk coming up. It's yeah. Like a small little boardwalk you can walk across. Yeah. All right, so actually, um, I think these are private boat houses. Um, they have private property signs on it, so like, I guess you can own one of these or I'm not really sure how it works, but uh, I think some of these might be owned by like Rollins and different like private crew cl clubs. Um, but yeah, so there's some little, a few bow houses. If you want, you can try to figure out how to get one. Bow. So one thing to be careful and to be no, take note about in any waterway that's in Florida, <laughs> central Florida, yeah. um, keep your kiddos away from the shore because there can be alligators and there can be snakes. Um, it's just, you know, that's just how it is here in Florida. So I need like lakes, rivers, creeks, anywhere that an alligator or a snake can live. Um, there might be an alligator or snake in that water. So there's a lot of like close entryways into the water that like, you know, your kiddos might want to like, you know, if they threw a ball in there or something, they might chase after it. Just be aware, it's, uh, it's wildlife in Florida. And believe it or not, like even those of us that are native to Florida, like I was like, you don't even think about it sometimes, but yeah, they're there. Oh yeah. You just need a reason to come out. Yep. So. But I think we're gonna wrap it up. But like I said, it's not that big of a park, um, but it's a good like like a lunch date or if you want to just come after you eat and have a little quick little walk. Photo session. Photo session. Um, it's one of the one of the parks in Winter Park. Um, but yeah. I think we might start heading out. It is getting warmer. Yeah. The canopy of the trees are is helping, but the humidity is kind of high too. And it's it's a small park, like. Mm hmm. Yeah. So um, I'm not sure if we're gonna cut the vlog here. We might do a little more weekend stuff, but yeah. We might make one more stop today. Yeah. So. We are actually gonna make a stop to Dutch Bros. I've actually like there's been a few popping up. Like there's one in Claremont. There's one in, uh, there's one further out by towards Disney, I think. Yeah. Um, yeah, like Kissimmee, that area. And there's another city, but I can't think of it right now, but it's it's close to Disney. Uh, Davenport, Davenport was where the other location oh, is. Okay. So this one just opened, I think like two weeks ago, and I've been wanting to try their protein coffee so badly. So we're gonna go over there and check it out. And then the good thing about Dutch Bros, I look at their menu, and they have um, a lot of like other drinks. So if you don't do teas and you don't do coffees, they have other things that you can drink. And they also have, I don't know about the snacks. I don't think there's very many snacks on the menu. Like I think I saw like a, something called a muffin top and maybe a granola bar, but I don't think they do like a lot of food, like per se Dunkin' or Starbucks. But I'm excited for the drinks because there's a lot of variety. And our friend over here, he does not drink tea or coffee, there'll be definitely something for him. So that's nice. Kind of like um, Tim Hortons. There's like a ton of variety. So we'll see what happens when we get there. So apparently they've been around since 1992, but they started off in Oregon. So I'm assuming from Oregon, you know, they had a few franchises in Oregon and then maybe they were more on that side. And then they're slowly making their way over to our side. Because like I said, they now have, they kind of open really fast. Like they've gotten like three or four locations 
this year, I believe, maybe end of last year and then into this year. So they're moving into, sorry if it's a little shaky, we're going through Winter Park. And if you've driven in this area, there's like a lot of either brick. speed bumps or brick roads or, roads or like um, bumps in the road. So sorry, ahead of time. But yeah, they've been around since 92 and they're an organ based company. And I guess they just kind of are more, they're just making more and more franchises and becoming more popular. So I've heard many good things about the coffee, especially the protein coffee. So we'll see. And this location is actually, I would say more on the outer side of Winter Park. It's not deep within. It's kind of, what would you say, like more? It's off of University and, and Semeron. Yeah. So like for anyone who doesn't know that, it's like University is, if you go down University, you'll eventually hit UCF. So it's like. Yeah, so it's more, more on that. Like, you, like I don't know if you heard Dan, but University side. Yeah. And then close to went like at the end of Winter Park, so yeah, you can you can get to it through like 4:36. Yeah, yeah, yeah 4:36. Yeah. So, update. Apparently, there's a line. <laughs> there's a long line. So we're gonna kind of get closer to it and just see like how far it is back, how far back we are, to determine whether we're gonna stick around. I'm hoping it's not too bad because I do really want to try it, but. Yeah. Uh, it's and the way the line is wrapped around it's kind of dangerous because there's like a traffic light like right ahead so we're kind of blocking flow of flow traffic, of traffic. Yeah. i don't know if it's just going to be like i think it's just going to be like a beginner thing like when something opens and it's like a big hype yep. i don't know if this is going to be a forever line kind of thing um but we're trying to get closer to see like where we are in line exactly and how much longer we have to wait so we're not too far behind. The building is over there. Let's get a good shot. Camera's not really focusing. There you go. So that's Dutch Bros. And it kind of looks like from what we can see, I don't know if you guys can see it on the camera, but there is a window it looks like that you can go up to mm -hmm. and actually place orders at the window, like park your car park your car in the parking lot and go up to the window in order so hmm, that would have been a better option <laughs> today yeah. we just didn't know like yeah it's hard because they got a bunch of other construction going around it and it was blocking the building i didn't even know that was the building because no. another building was blocking it if i'd known there's parking we would have just parked and gone out to the window yeah because we did see like people coming out of our line and going around but we didn't really know where they're going so i guess for next time we know you can park and you can order at the window you might i don't know you might be able to park and go in and order i don't know though yep okay so we actually just placed our order i didn't have i didn't record the menu because there really isn't a menu out yet and they're actually the the people the workers that are taking your order don't have menus either she was really nice so and she's like i'll guide you through like if you yeah. need help ordering i just kind of googled the menu online and i Kind of like i've had recommendations so i've heard the golden eagle is a really great drink so i what i did was i took the golden eagle which is a frozen drink and i added protein to it to make my own protein coffee um yeah but just know like when you get in line i don't know how bad like how long this like line situation is gonna be but if you get in line and just know you you know your order like know what you're gonna order yeah. uh, you might have to just look it up online but yeah they're not giving out paper menus like we did the Jollibee soft opening thing when they did that and they were handing out paper menus at the like the end of the line so like by the time you got to order you kind of knew what you wanted um they, they should probably do that here but I don't think they were anticipating this many people you guys help yet? yes yeah, Perfect, yeah, thank you. yeah so I don't think they're probably like Dan said anticipating this much um because like the only way I knew the menu was from recommendations and I googled it and she was willing to guide me through it, but it's kind of hard because there's like so many choices. Yeah. I don't know how hot. she would guide me if I didn't have any idea. Um, and it's hot. And it's hot outside and they're kind of out in the heat and yeah. I feel bad for them. So you don't want to like... I feel bad for the workers them. though, because if they're being asked the same questions for each car, it would just be easier for the company to like pass out menus and have them just hand it out. That would be this. I don't know. That's just... Like Dan said, the Jollibee one we went to, we already knew what we wanted because we had a menu far into the line to look at. So, mm -hmm. but I did go ahead and Dan didn't get anything, but I did go ahead and ask her, um, do you want to say something? 
Yeah, well, I didn't like I didn't get anything just because uh, I didn't want anything sweet right now. But they did. The only thing I saw on the menu that was zero sugar, non caffeine, like non coffee, was a strawberry lemonade or strawberry sparkling water. Um, they did list off a bunch of like different syrups they had that were she, zero sugar. She did mention raspberry and peach. Yeah, but I don't know if they make a drink out of it. Hmm. So. But like once again, if you handed out menus, that would solve that problem. The problem is there isn't a menu in the online. They just had the one drink that was zero sugar. Yeah, um, but they did have. They do have quite a few like regular sugary. Like they have um, sparkling sodas. They have energy drink things. They have lemonade mixers. Um, so I'm assuming. I don't know. Maybe next time when we come, we can try and see if Dan can get one of the zero sugar things, and I'll go through exactly like specifically what they have. Um, and again, maybe because it's like an opening and they're just opening, they don't have everything yet. I don't know. But I'll let you, I'll get back to you about the sugar-free things. She did mention like peach, raspberry, strawberry, but we don't know if they make a peach zero sugar drink and a raspberry zero sugar drink or if it's just like add-ins. I don't know. We'll have to find that out. But yeah, well, I think we're about maybe five minutes away from getting our things. Mm -hmm. So see you then. Okay, so there actually is a menu uh, like right by where we're gonna cash out soon or like get an order. Uh, it's kind of small even when I, when I did zoom in so you guys can try to zoom in but you can see there's like coffee, um, energy drinks, lemonade and tea, <clears throat> smoothies, shakes, and snacks. So I guess that would be most of your flavors. It's weird though, because I saw sparkling soda online and I don't see that here. So maybe this isn't the full menu. Maybe this is just like for now. All right, so I actually intended to get a froze, like one of the blended drinks, but I think I might have accidentally forgot to tell the girl that. But at any way, um, I did end up getting the Golden Eagle iced coffee and they put in um, the protein milk in it and it's actually really good i tried it it's nice and creamy it's refreshing the coffee flavor and quality is good too so yeah guys i would definitely give it a try um i will say i don't know if it's because it's the you know they just opened and it's on the weekend too that the line was a little bit long but i would definitely say it was worth the wait uh we'll have to let you know how the other drinks are at another time but yeah definitely recommend it it's not overly sweet either which i like like i don't feel like i'm drinking a pound of sugar so yeah guys give it a try if you are in this area or there's other ones in orlando kissimmee like i said davenport so i would definitely give dutch bros a try yeah it was good <laughs> i didn't drink it uh, you have a mango nada they actually have a seasonal drinks with mango and tahine and boba and things like that so that's kind of cool yeah Definitely more variety. Um, yeah, apparently they have, uh, um, I guess they call them Rebels, which are like energy drinks. Hmm. So they have a set of energy drinks that you can get. That's kind of cool. That's different. Yeah. I don't think I've seen that at other places. I know like Starbucks um, refreshers do have caffeine in them. That's why you get like a kick. Mm. So maybe it's kind of the same concept, they, but they're just actually telling you that there's an energy drink, energy stuff in it. I think oh. Rebel is a type of energy drink. I think it's. I like, think you're right. So, I think it's related to Monster. Yeah. So, but yeah, worth it, guys. Get your Dutch Bros. All right. So last stop of the day, Target. Hopefully, don't come out with too much stuff. <laughs> and yes, it's still hot. <laughs> All right. First stop. Just checking out the dollar section. I know, like lots of like odds and ends. These look kind of cool if you have like an outdoor party or something or a barbecue. Oh, this is cool. It's like glasses, a set of glasses. And they have like outdoor, it's like bowls. Oh, this is really cool. It's like a whole, we could do like a whole taco thing. Yeah, because they have the little tortilla holders and then they have, I think this is like the set up the taco station. Pretty cool. Let's see, oh, and this is cool because it actually holds tacos. Like you can set up all your tacos in there. I love this. Just 
some more like like knacks. It's like a little cute. I have a little niece that would like that. So this is really cute. It's like a little, if you have like a s'mores night, they have like chocolate, graham crackers, marshmallows, like a little plate. There's like little stamps for teachers. Um, and there's something else I wanted to show you guys. Oh, if you want to do like an omelet in the microwave, they have this little holder here. So nice little cute stuff. This looks like more stuff for like if you're outside. It's like a sign. Sun, motel, and cafe, like decor for your outside. More decorations. This is nice because you can put like lots of things in here if you're hosting. I like the host. This is pretty cool. It's like a microwave rice cooker. So you could like make like a serving. It's only three dollars. So we're actually in the bakery section and we're kind of looking for, I think Dan's looking for, you want like a pan that has a rack, right? Wire rack? Yeah, kind of like that. Cause we had one, but we couldn't find it. And then the ones that we can find at home, like they don't match. So when you're baking, it doesn't line up and it's kind of annoying. So Target has pretty good bakeware though. I've had, I've had good experience with their stuff. I will say we got like a few pans from other stores um, that are supposed to, you would think they would be good quality, but they aren't the best. So it looks like he's ending up getting these two. Yeah, it's like a little rack here. So this helps like when you cook like, not to get like wet underneath. Yeah, and especially when you cook like wet things like meat that need to like rest or drip, have drippings, these are good. And obviously if you're doing like cookies and things like that, like I made bagels the other day and I used it for that too, so yes. anything like that. Is that That's what you wanted? Came here. Yeah. We might look around a little bit, but I don't know. Looking around Target sometimes is a little dangerous, but we'll see. <laughs> oh yeah. That's like a really like, nice jar. It's like a mason jar, but like it doesn't have like the metal top on it. It's still got like a gasket in there, so it does like... Is it, it is it glass? Glass yeah. top? It's yeah, nice. And then guys, I saw this, which I thought was really cool. There's like classic pectin. And it looks like you can use it like if you're making jams, yeah. gummies, whatever that needs pectin. You can replace it for gelatin. gelatin. Yeah. So that's cool. So I didn't realize they had different kinds of ketchup. Mine's made like ha jalapeno, habanero. They give you the spice level. That's pretty cool. They have like a harissa aioli. This is new. And then the bottle of ketchup looks kind of cool now. Yeah, that's, that's cool, habanero and jalapeno ketchup. And they have freeze-dried candy. I think the one down there is like tropical. They have this one. They have like a lemon twist, lemon burst. So if you're into freeze-dried, I haven't tried it yet. Do I want to. Yeah, it's kind of like what they started doing at Disney with their different drinks and stuff. Yeah, this is- I don't know if you all remember the figment drink that we eat, the milkshake. I don't know if you remember the figment milkshake that had like the freeze-dried Skittles like uh -huh. a year ago, I think, or two years ago. But I guess it's now a thing. Everyone's doing freeze-dried Skittles now. I guess, I guess, I guess I have tried it then, guys, because I had it on the figment drink. Yeah. Hey guys, this is really cool. It's like a Bluetooth radio, and it's like vintage style. Portable Bluetooth radio. So it's like if you're having a barbecue or just outside chilling, it's really cute. They have that and they have the cream color. And then, <laughs> that is so cute, Snorlax. How much is it? $10. I think it's $10. And they probably have a bigger one too. That'd be cool. Pokemon. <laughs> and then they have like a badminton set over here, if you play badminton. And it looks like, I don't know what that is, bots, bocce? Is that a game? Yeah. It's another game. And then like looks like some blankets and some totes. So lots of barbecuing things. We are in Dan's favorite section. The Legos. Star Wars Legos. He's actually working on one. I got him one for his birthday. Maybe if we do get a chance, we'll put in some 
a little bit of footage so you can see what it looks like. I don't even remember which one was it. One day. Oh yeah. One day. Um, mine's I not a Star Wars one though. It's um the the DeLorean. Oh yeah, yeah. Sorry guys, I was in between the two. I was gonna do either Star Wars or um, Back to the Future, but like he was like, I definitely prefer the or I want the Back to the Future one. It's the car, the DeLorean. Want to go like Mega Blocks? <gasps> That's cool. And, like Pokemon and it's blocks. Pokemon themed. Oh, they have a ton. They got a bunch, yeah. They have like, uh, oh, Bulbasaur, that's my favorite right there. Yep. They have one up here. <gasps> that's really cool, guys. And they have a, um, what's his name? Charmander? Charizard. Charizard. <laughs> my bad. Clearly not a Pokemon expert. But, but like, I think Mega Bloks is like the little kid's version of Legos. That's pretty cool. I feel I love how Legos has just branched out and done so many things. Like, they have like flowers now, they have food, they have bouquets. Um, they have all these like helmet thing helmets from the Star Wars. Yeah, I have one of these too. It's pretty cool. My next thing that I because I actually started getting into them too, I did a, um, a up one that my one of my best friends she got me into, so I got the up one, and then I now wanna do um, more of the Harry Potter stuff, like the train or the castle. Like, yeah, they think that's the castle right there. Oh no, this is, this is, um. No, not that, this is, um. and whatever. Yeah, this is like Honey Dukes. But um, over there is the castle, and then they have, oh, the train is up here, which is cool. Yeah, so I wanna, that's my next one, or maybe yeah, another Disney one. one. Patronus, they have Mario. The Mario ones are cool too. I just wish they were bigger and had more stuff. Because they're really small. <laughs> they got Minecraft. Oh yeah, Minecraft. So it's like <laughs> the perfect the perfect thing to use the Legos with. Yeah, because in Minecraft it's kinda like Legos. It's just blocks. So that's cool. But and then on the other section is the game section over here. And if you guys have any game recommendations, we love playing games, card games especially. So, let us know. They have this like really cool Donkey Kong one. I don't know if you guys played Donkey Kong growing up. But there's a Donkey Kong Lego set and then there's the actual Peach's Castle, which is cool. Yeah, they also have like uh, X-Men 97. So I don't know if you guys have been watching that. It's a new, like a re reboot. Hmm. Not a reboot, it's like, it's a continuation of like the 89 series, I think, 87. Like the cartoon? 97 series. <laughs> cartoon? Yeah, it's a cartoon. Okay. But like, um, it's a show on, on Disney and it's pretty good. Hmm. Uh, it's, it's a pretty good X-Men cartoon and it's like a little more adult. I will say it's like more adult themed than for children. But yeah, it's cool. They, they already have a Lego set for it. Hmm. Pretty cool. And you gotta love how Target has a drink holder. So I was able to bring my coffee in here with me so it doesn't get hot in the car. Continuing with our Lego theme, Simba. I wonder if they have a Mufasa one. I think I found my next one. This one, it has like the Disney friends. That's, oh, that's really cool. cute. It's like all the Disney sidekicks. And it's the Disney 100 collection. That's yeah, interesting. I didn't know Lego had a Disney 100 collection. It has Miko in it. It's really hard to find Miko in like anything. So that's... Yeah. Oh, and well, he's got a cracker. And one thing about us, we love our Animal Crossing. Yes. Played it a lot during COVID. Got a few more Animal Crossing ones. Lego also has like this uh, Creators Edition. Um, and so they do like cars, Polaroid, the Classic Defender, which is kind of cool. So if you have a kid that's into cars, this would make a pretty sweet, sweet gift. And it's, you know, a little educational. It gets them off the screen. This thing is really cute. It's a Squishmallow. I know my niece is really into Squishmallows. My sister's too. What is it? I don't know. I'm trying to think. Is it a, a lemon? Cake? It says Edwin. Oh, I think it's a banana, banana pudding. Cause there's a banana on the top. I think that's a banana. Yeah, I don't know. It doesn't really say what he is. But I think it's a banana. You're right, banana pudding. He is really cute though. Edwin. Yeah. Hey 
this is an oxonautal. And if you remember when we went to Canada, we went to the aquarium, we were like looking for it. I don't remember if we found it. We or found not. it. Yeah, we it was in the tank. It. Yeah. And uh, my niece was like really crazy about that. Oxonautals. <laughs> so, this is to her. And here's another cool Lego find that we found. Like uh, we went to Barnes and Nobles and we found it, but they have it here too. But it's like a little arcade, like Pac-Man, old yeah, school retro thing. That was on the list. That was another thing that I was asking Dan, which one, and he chose the Back to the Future one. And oh, then I see it. you got Home Alone. It's right here. Oh, it's down there. That one. That's Working what he's on that one. Currently doing. All right, guys. I found probably one of the coolest Lego sets. So this is a transformer, right? But as you can see up there, I was wondering, but it converts. So it is an actual transformer, but it's a Lego transformer. It's Optimus Prime, but that's pretty cool. Hey everybody, so I'm not sure where we left off. I think the last time you saw us, we were leaving Target. Um, yeah, we left Target. <laughs> uh, came home, take a nap. So that's, we're in our pajama clothes and my hair is a little bit of a mess, so I'll ignore that. But we did take a nap because it's hot. Really hot. It's really hot. Apparently now it's 99. It was 91 earlier and now it's 99. Yep. So um, we're going to do a quick little cooking demo vlog thing. Um, what I have here is a sirloin chip um, roast that you can get fairly inexpensive at like Publix or your grocery store. It's a cheaper cut of meat, um, but like you can roast it and, and it comes out pretty good. So the first thing I'm gonna do is actually um, mix up my spices. So um, I have some salt, pepper, smoked paprika, onion powder, and garlic powder. Um, you want to use the powders on the on the actual meat because if you use like whole onions like as the seasoning it can burn pretty easily so um i, I like to weigh it a little bit because i usually don't measure but for the sake of the video i'll kind of give you like a rough estimate it's definitely gonna be 50 50 salt so those are gonna be my base and then after that i'll um figure out what kind of ratio i want with the paprika onion and garlic so I'm measuring out the salt. I'm gonna start with the salt. It's a pretty big piece of meat, so you want like make sure you got enough seasoning on it. Um, let's see, maybe like 32 grams. So 32 grams of that. So that means I'm gonna want 32 grams of the pepper as well. So. Seems like a lot of pepper. So just, just go with that. Um, so that so that ends up being 25. It's not perfectly 50-50, but it's close enough. So you mix that in a little bit. Um, I don't mind there being more pepper. I like a peppery cut across on my on my meat. This is where you can kind of tailor the flavor of your like how you want your meat to taste. Yeah, and I, and I think salt and pepper are like. It's however you like your salt and pepper, you know. Yep. All right, so then we got some smoked paprika. Um, I'll probably just do like maybe eight, eight ounces of it. I probably should be doing tablespoons. That looks good enough. Um, so that's like five grams, but like I said, I don't really measure. I just go by like what it looks like. Um, I'm just measuring for the sake of the video, but if you know, you cook with feeling more, more than anything else. So, um, like that looks good to me for garlic. Onion. <laughs> Onion, and then. It's about 14, right? About 14? Um, 
It's about the same amount as the... Oh, because you didn't zero it out. Yeah, I didn't zero it out. Okay. So, like, we'll do seven of each, so this would come up to 21. That's okay. good. All right, so then you can just kind of mix it. I know I was using my finger, it's clean. But... Where people are like, don't use your finger. I'm gonna use my hands anyways to put it on there. So, and we're cooking for ourselves. Yeah. Make sure everything. Is... The reason you want to use like a whisk. Let me see if I can get a whisk. All right, so we're back. Sorry, I had to find my little whisk. So like, just the whisk helps us incorporate and. In homogenize a little bit better than using my finger. Alright, that looks good to me. Break up some of those chunks of like smoked paprika. So, if I don't use all this mix, I'll just put it in a um, jar and I can use it the next time I want to cook a piece of meat. But, you gotta remember, this has salt in it. So, when you, whenever you use it again, I gotta remember there's salt in that, so I don't use more salt. All right, so the other thing I need is gonna be some yellow mustard. Um, you don't have to use yellow mustard. You can use Dijon mustard. You can use like grape upon if you want. Um, this is cheap. Um, and we had it. Yeah, yeah, and we had it. So I don't need a lot, but enough to kind of, that's good. All right, so let's season up the meat. That's our next plan. Uh, so I got the meat. So it, it does come tied up. Um, the one I got, the the um, the little string isn't really it's supposed to like keep it together. It's not really doing its job. It's kind of like like relaxing. And when I opened it out of the um, the actual um, package, it was like like spread out. But you know what, um, let me wash my hands and get some gloves so that way I'm not like cross-contaminated by touching the meat and then going to the seasoning. So let me get some gloves, wash my hands, and we'll be right back. Alright, so I am going to start mixing it. The first thing I want to do is um, brush on some good, good amount of like the mustard. So, and I know what some of you might be thinking like, oh gosh, is it going to taste like mustard? Like, no. It's not gonna taste like mustard. It it's really just a way to like help bind the meat, bind bind the um, seasoning to the meat. So you just like put a good dose of it. Remember to get the sides. Don't they do this with like beef Wellingtons too? They do it for any roast, really. Yeah. Like any beef roast, they'll do this. But like fancier restaurants will use um, Grey Poupon. So. Hopefully I have enough mustard. If not, I can always squeeze out more. Get on the crosses. Just making sure I get out the sides. You want it? It's a big piece of meat. Um, this is a two pound piece of meat, so just keep that in mind. I think that's good. Just use it up. Okay. So that's mustard business. Now we're gonna actually season it. Make sure it's like evenly distributed. Can I put that up? No, it's okay. So, so when you're seasoning, remember to season high. All right? So it like distributes evenly. And like, one thing I know is like, you want to kind of press it in, press in the seasoning. So like, press it in. 
Make sure it gets in there. Let's flip it over. So keep seasoning. See if I missed some spots in there for the mustard. And you could do a trick of like rolling. All this in there, get all the seasoning, mop it up. Great. Doesn't look very pleasant, but it'll taste good. Sure, <laughs> string is still doing its job. I think that's good. Yeah. That looks I don't know good. what it looks like with all the spices mm -hmm. and the mustard. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna wash my hands because I did end up touching it with my other hand as well. And then we'll be back for the next steps. Okay, so Dan basically added, he cut up, we cut up onions and we peeled some fresh garlic and just put it underneath. And he's gonna explain what he's gonna do with those. But does anybody have any tips for peeling garlic? Because we were just talking about it and we were like, there really isn't an easy way to peel garlic. Like, no. what do you think? I mean, I find some tricks, but like if you want a whole piece of garlic peeled, that, that's the hardest one. But like I find like if I just like crush it under my hand and kind of release it, like that's easy. If you start cutting it up, it, yeah. that's easy. But like if you want a whole piece without like a pristine like garlic clove, that, yeah, that's kind of hard to get. Like I cut the end off and that makes it a little easier to peel, but no, there's no really easy way in my opinion. If you have a tip, let us know. So like Fast said, I added a little, um, slices of onions under the meat. I added like five to six cloves of garlic as well. Mm -hmm. And so what this is, like this is our aromatic, so it's gonna help like flavor the meat a little bit while it's cooking. Um, and to keep it from burning, I mean, I'm gonna add some chicken stock, chicken broth to the bottom of the pan. So that just helps like the, like the garlic and onion from burning while it's cooking on the sheet. And then um, if you notice when I season, I season on the tray with like the salt and everything going in the tray. So that's gonna help season like the juices at the end uh, so we're gonna try to make like an au jus at the end after like it rosa and the meat juices are in there um, but like I have some mustard seasoning already in there some salt like some of my all-purpose seasoning um, so that's kind of why I did it on the tray like I think it helps clean up and right? stock is like a good alternative to like wine if you don't do alcohol yeah I mean when you're when you're baked like doing a, a roast like, you don't want to use wine like wine's more for like if you're gonna be uh doing like more of a, what's it called, not a, the, uh, nah, I forgot like what it is. Like a reduction? A reduction or like if you're going to be doing um a, uh, what is it called? Braising, when you're braising, mm. sorry. Um, yeah, when you're doing braising, that's when you wouldn't want to do like the alcohol because that, when you braise, like, the alcohol will actually start to evaporate um, the longer you braise it, right? So you can make it non-alcoholic by the end of it. Because you don't actually, like, some dishes that will have alcohol in it, they flambe it or they burn off the alcohol with like a, like a, um, like fire or something. Um, but when you're braising, you don't do that. So the, what helps evaporate all the alcohol is the time it takes to braise. Mm. But like, when you're doing like, um, like a sauce like this, uh, it, it's just you want something that's like easier that's gonna like kind of steam up the oven but Yeah, this is gonna go into the center of a 450 degree Fahrenheit. I don't know what the Celsius is for that We're in America. We're in the US. So I'll post it. Yeah, we'll post it um, But yeah, it's gonna go into 450 for 15 minutes and when that 15 minutes is up I'm gonna bring it down to 300 so I can cook slower So that first 15 minutes at the high temp is so that we can get a little crust on there um, and then once that crust forms, then we'll bring it down and then I'll slowly cook for like another hour or so. Um, but yeah, so this needs to go in the oven. We already have like some potatoes in there that are baking. They're going to be part of our meal as well. 
Just like Dan said, it's like at 450. Yeah, and be careful and with the liquid in there. Yeah. It's like, you know, it moves while you're... The oven always makes me nervous. No matter how many times I bake something. And that goes in for 15 minutes. And we're also doing broccoli. And we decided to try out the stalks. Yeah, I heard the stalks are supposed to be, like, supposed to be, taste good as well. So, but if it doesn't taste good, we got the rest of it. It's not dangerous to eat, so. No, I think, I'm, try. I'm just curious, because I thought, it, I always thought they were more fibrous, but. Yep. We'll see. Broccoli, get your greens in. So Dan got this fancy meat thermometer. I guess it's like Thermal Pro, Therm, yeah. Yeah, I haven't used this one yet. He hasn't used it, so we're gonna try to figure it out and see if we can figure it out. If not, then we'll do the traditional meat thermometer. All right, so um, yeah, I took my apron off because now I'm not <laughs> cutting anything. But uh, I did come back 15 minutes later at the 450. I noticed the meat's not, it's still kind of, it hasn't really fully uh, crusted. So you can kind of see it's a little gray. So I put it in for another 10 minutes. Help, hoping that like helps like. Smells good. Mm -hmm. All right, so um, I let it go for another 10 minutes at that 450, and I think this is a lot better now. You can kind of see it's like starting to brown up a little bit. Um, so now what I'm gonna do, I got these, uh, the actual like temperature things to work. It was kind of easy. I just like turned them on and they were, they were already, um, they are already like calibrated from, from the factory. So I didn't have to do anything, I just had to turn it on and they saw each other. And so now I'm gonna to try to stick this probe in there. And so I can temperature it, temp it. Um, I'm looking for 135, which is a medium. And then when I take it out, cook a little bit more so it'll come a little bit little more to like medium to medium well. Faz likes medium well, I like medium, so hopefully that's a good balance. Um, so yeah, I'm just gonna stick this in here and let it cook until it hits the temperature I need. So. Ovens, guys, very scary. Close that up. Okay, so he's, right now, it's sitting at 89. And I needed to get it to 135. What's cool about this thermometer, it has a receiver. So you see the receiver, I can bring this wherever I'm sitting and the oh. receiver will show me the temperature. Cool. So, pretty, pretty nifty. We live in, we live in the future. <laughs> Well, the thing is beeping, so that must mean it's at the temperature. Yep. Let's check it out. Looks good. Yeah, gotta watch my light. So you want to take that um that probe out with gloves because it's gonna be hot. That's why I use the gloves. Alright, let's watch this out. Looks pretty good. This is our finished product, and it's very hot. And so now we'll probably use all this stuff to make a sauce. The drippings, the garlic, the onion, add a few more things. Sorry, just remember, remember like, as soon as it comes out of the oven, do not try to cut it. Don't do anything to it. I just moved it over and I'm letting it rest for a good amount of time before we actually slice into it. But in the meantime, we're gonna make a broccoli and we're gonna make our pan sauce. And there goes the sauce bubbling away. What'd you put in it? I put the, the like the drippings and then I put some Worcestershire sauce, some of my seasoning, and then some half and half milk and then a lot of pepper. I'm trying to make like a peppercorn sauce. Mm. Is it gonna be like creamy? Yellow creamy, but more peppery.
And then broccoli is just blanching and broccoli is just broccoli. Yeah, we'll probably saute that with some butter. Yeah. All right, we're gonna cut into it. Hopefully it's cooked right. We did let it sit. Remember to take the little rope off. Um, I will use my hands because they're clean. <laughs> um, so I think I want to cut it just to like maybe see what it looks like. Yeah, it looks pretty good. Look at that. Let me just try a piece of it. Hmm. Hmm. Looks pretty juicy. You can see it. It's pretty good. What do you think? Good. So you don't taste the mustard, right? You want to try? Sure. Mm-hmm. Tastes good, right? It's good. It's juicy. You can kind of see the meat there. And this whole piece was like twenty dollars. So, like I said, pretty inexpensive. And this will last us for a couple days. Yeah, because we're thinking like we're gonna make sandwiches with the leftovers. Yeah. So it's like a two day. It's like a thing. roast beef. Sorry, yeah. I was just making sure it wasn't dripping on my foot. <laughs> but like you see, I tried to like kind of contain my mess in a tin foil too. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we're gonna cut in, make our plates. Um, and I'll show you, our, maybe we'll show you your plate yeah. when we're mid done. And then this is the finish. This is the finished sauce. I tried it. It's pretty good. A little tangy. You do taste the peppercorns. You get a hit to the peppercorns. And bro broccoli. Sauteing. And so I'm also probably going to use this homemade barbecue sauce with mine. I found the recipe, I think, on Pinterest, and it's lasted pretty long, and it tastes, it tastes pretty good. It tastes like, kind of like sweet baby berries, to be honest. All right, so this is what our food came out looking like. I ended up um, putting the meat a little bit more on the stove just to kind of get a crust on all the sides and kind of like, you know, encapsulate a little bit more. Looks a little bit better, I think, in my opinion. But yeah, so we got our meat, we got our veg, and we got another veg. All right, so um, that's gonna be it for us today. Thanks for joining us. This is a, our Sunday. Kind of was a haphazard. We did random <laughs> stuff. A little bit of this, a little bit of that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I hope you enjoyed the cooking little instruction thing that I did for the meat that I cooked. Um, it tasted pretty good. So um, yeah, give it a try. Let me know if you give it a try and if you like it. And just plan ahead a little bit, like because it does take. It, it's eight o'clock now. Or like yeah. 8, yeah, I started at like six. Yeah. So yeah. you know, just so you eat earlier, just plan ahead. Yeah. Um, but yeah, everything it tasted good. And don't forget to check out the Craft Azalea Park. Yep. It's a nice park that's like free and it looks nice and you can have a picnic. Even a nice place to curl up and read a book, to be honest, because there's a lot of benches like by the lake and you get a nice yep. breeze. I'm a reader, so yeah, I would read there. Yeah. Well yeah. Thanks for joining us on the vlog. Oh, and our Target haul. Um, yeah. We just got the... Target's always dangerous because you always come out with more than what you need, but luckily we didn't get um, come out with too much more than what we needed. No. Um, but yeah, so hope you enjoyed the vlog. We'll see you on the next Vibe. Yeah. Uh, if you liked the video, remember to like. Subscribe. Favorite. Follow us on Instagram. We have a TikTok. Mm -hmm. uh, she, does a, she handles more of the social media stuff, so... Um, but yeah. yeah, I'm trying. Yeah. But yeah, follow TikTok, Instagram, and our YouTube page. All right. So, we'll see you next time on uh, Couples Vibe. Bye. Have a good day.